Hi everyone, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a bunch of things and get some rock piano going. Well, it's not just to play rock piano, it's to improve your hand coordination, it's to understand the circle of fifths, it's to uh, look at passing and landing chords, it's also to play in different modes, be it major, minor, mixolydian or dorian, and it's also to train your left hand to get a very engine-like bass pattern to go with a lot of music, to go with funk, rock, disco, dance, you name it, right? So we are first of all going to start with a simple punchy energy creating bass line. And then we are going to figure out some chords in the right hand, a rhythm pattern for the chords. Which is pretty easy. And then move around that either around the circle of fifths or in a bunch of other patterns. We look at the whole tone scale motion, we look at random motion as well. So do stay tuned till the end of this lesson. You might want to get your keyboards out and play along with me. You'll also be given my handwritten notes and the staff notation for these exercises. They'll be waiting for you on our Patreon page. All the links are in the description and the subscribe button is right in front of you. It's literally right there. Why don't you hit it right now? It'll be cool. Let's get cracking. So to start off the explanation, I'm going to just pick a key almost at random. So I'm just going to take E. And let's begin with the left hand bass pattern. The left hand bass pattern will start by going eighth notes or quavers, but with some articulation. So before we do the articulation, let me just play you an E. And we are going to do octave with the root. So pinky for the root, thumb for the octave. Now one way to play this would be in a very machine or a synth like manner but we are going to we'll start with that so with a synth like manner there's no dynamics there's no accents which in a way is good for some work for some genres but when you play this what happens is when you lack the dynamics you're also going to increase the strain to your arm or hand in general. Now what are all the parts we have to deal with when we play the piano? There are our fingers, there are the, there's the wrist, there is the forearm, there's the tricep, there's the shoulder, the back and that's about it I guess. Maybe other things going on but for the most part you need to be in control over all these muscles and the wrist is very helpful in this regard. So if you play the piano without moving the wrist or without keeping the wrist loose, see, this is how my wrist is. Right? I'm not forcing it up and down. It's very, very light or loose when I play the piano. It shouldn't be like this. So now if I move my shoulder, my wrist is stiff. So this is what you could call as a stiff wrist. And this is a more relaxed, loose kind of uh, elastic kind of wrist. Now, if you keep your wrist loose when you play, you'll get some natural dynamics. You can you can do a technique wherein you go down, you just let the wrist drop down and then trampoline it up. So you get sort of two for the price of one, like a uh, uh, upstroke and downstroke for a guitar player but we're not actually d going up and down you're just faking it by keeping a very fluid wrist so in the earlier case you're playing like this this is more with your shoulder but if you want a synth like motion without shoulder also you can just play with your finger tuck 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 Right? So you can use the power of the two fingers itself, which is which is a workout on its own. So but for more energy or power, you can bring in your shoulder. But if you overdo it, 
and try playing fast then you observe that this technique is almost useless because it, it, your entire arm is now feeling a very like electrical shock uh, fatigue and lot of pain right it's literally shivering so if you use your shoulder even though your shoulder is a strong part of the arm it's not going to work out if you want to play fast if you don't use your shoulder you can actually not only play fast you're able to play fast with dynamics and for so long without any pain at least there's no pain so how did i do that so the synth technique uses the shoulder and the finger to give you this very choppy pattern but you can't go faster than this i think you can't go there for if, as you want to go faster you will need the wrist to now do this trampoline technique as i'm calling it where you drop it down and trampoline it up now this is an exaggeration but it's just to show you what's happening naturally as it as the wrist loosely comes down and the forearm will propel the entire arm up the entire hand goes up with the help of the forearm and tricep and the rest of the stronger muscles so the drop will just happen and then the lift okay there we go and check this out you're getting an instant or automatic legato staccato legato staccato because when you jump up in the air it's automatically staccato okay now you don't have to overdo the legato staccato you can just go just the motion of this this up and down wrist motion can be ensured see that 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 try to increase the speed a bit and you will realize you can do this pretty fast without too much pain and you just cannot do it with the normal method which is the whole shoulder which is why i actually tell kids especially when they come to our classes use less of your arm use less of your shoulder keep your wrist light and try to play with this bouncy technique sometimes you bounce it up and down in other cases you can bounce it sideways when you're playing disco now i've done a separate disco tutorial you should check that out in the description we we'll leave you a, a note so so there you actually have to turn your wrist so in all of these discussions the wrist has to move to avoid the pain okay so this is all that the left hand needs to do so let's work out some accent patterns in the left hand before the right hand comes into play with chords and then a lot of other music theory uh, terms will be used so left hand starting with that loud soft or legato staccato kind of technique now let's look at accents by doing stuff like this let's first imagine that the kick drum of in this virtual drum kit would be at the 1 2 3 4 so boom 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 do 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 3 4 do 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 so you want to stress on the kicks or on the down beats this is one articulation which you should work out two Okay next articulation is imagine the snare drum follow the snare and now try some irregular stuff maybe on of the one and and of the two let's say cuz on the piano you don't have a 
too many options you can't bend notes like guitar players and violin players you can't do this upstroke downstroke thing it's literally just one stroke so the only thing you can control is volume and volume makes everything happen on our instrument so uh, one and the end of the two let's see how that two and three and four maybe some other ends could work one and two okay so for the most part we are going to rely on just the snares or the kick so i this is the snare again and that's going to serve a found, as a foundation for the right hand so now what will the right hand do so if there's an e e here you're going to end up playing an e triad for the most part the triad would either be e major or e minor now e major will exist in the major scale it will exist in the mixolydian scale it will exist in the mixo flat 6 scale okay and e minor exists in the natural minor scale harmonic Dorian exists in others as well, but we'll just hover around these three for major, three major S scales, and three minor S scales. So, what are the major scales again? Major, Mixolydian, and then Mixo flat six with the C there. Then minors, natural, harmonic. the raise 7 with respect to natural minor dorian with the raise 6 with respect to the normal regular natural minor okay now if you are playing an e major chord i'll give you a rhythm pattern now for the right hand and let's only do this rhythm pattern however if you are having a problem with the hand coordination you could wait and just hold e major and play it in an incremental way start with semi breves with that uh, rock pattern of the left hand so semi breves just hold the chord maybe minims now 3 Crotchets, quarters. Now the assumption is you can do that, or actually just only do that if you are finding it tricky right now, and then continue watching, and you should do the remaining maybe a bit later after you at least got crotchets in the right hand with the eighth note pattern in the left hand. So. coming to the actual pattern the actual pattern is notated there so it will be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and rest 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and wait 4 let's do that at pace 1 and 2 1 2 and 3 Okay now let's take our chord E major and let's try and play that 1 1 2 three. with the bass rock pattern then Now this is nice but we are now going to bring in some flavor with a passing chord so we'll use some cadence concepts first starting off with the plagal cadence so what is a plagal cadence it's usually a four going to one amen it's called the amen cadence as well but what i'm going to do here is use it in you could say in an elton john style okay uh or deep purple style also they use that the guitar player richie blackmore does that a lot in especially the song woman from tokyo you should check that out so if you take e continue the eighth note phrasing if the left now bring in 
the A chord, which is the four with respect to E, correct? That's the plagal. So A goes to E, A goes to E, but we're not going to play. We could, we could do A bass and E, but we're going to pivot or anchor our bass. Just keep that drone going. Play it lower if you like. But I'm just gonna stick with it higher. And now go back to that pattern. Pa pa ba pa pa ba pa pa ba. But what we'll do is jumble the chords. A A E A A E. Okay? A A E A A E. Two A's and an E. A A E A A E. That'll be plagal. That's the pattern. Let's slow that. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and little faster. And as I go faster, I want to ensure that my left hand is, is bouncing. Otherwise, the pain you're going to get is going to be excruciating, I think. It, you know, that's in that synth way, which I told you earlier. I'm not saying that the synth technique is wrong i'm just saying it'll hurt if you if you keep using your arm shoulder too much it'll really hurt so use the wrist bounce maybe keep it slow for a moment so sing maybe i'm happen to like the first inversion of a and then the second inversion of e i like that that Amen melody. A lot of bands do that. But you can also start with another version of A, the second inversion. And you get a kind of a... Or if you want to keep the high, the common note E up top and never change it. So it just so happens that I'm going to use the first inversion of A because it sounds nice and then second inversion of E, okay? Now there's a lot of melody, there's a lot of... It's already a kind of a rememberable hook in my opinion. But it's a bit harmonically boring in the sense there's too much of the E, isn't it? So I'll give you now just to wind up the lesson. Now we get into a little bit more of the music theory. You can make this interesting modally or exploring other scales but keep the same cadence. So if it's plagal... Plagal means four going to one. If you want to explore plagal cadence further, I've done a very detailed video on plagal cadence and this extends into the Mixolydian mode as well because the Mixolydian mode uses a lot of the plagal stuff. So there's, a, there's always some supplementary material, especially in the field of theory and ear training, to help improve your knowledge of what this stuff is what terms are used and also how to hear this so do do consider watching or you know look at a playlist or you make your own playlist of some of the related videos we'll put a few in the description check that out after watching this one so so that would have been full on major or it could even be mixolydian because even in the mixolydian the 4 is major but what if you wanted mixolydian with a flat 6 you have that so what's going to happen now it's not going to be a major anymore it'll be a minor it'll be this a minor will be your flavor chord or your passing chord this stage if you'd like to wander off and do an another rhythm pattern apart from what i've told you feel free so up to you but the the whole idea here is a minor going to e major a minor going to e major okay This was minor. And 
natural minor would have A minor, E minor. There we go. Okay, uh, what about Dorian? That will have a 4 major going to 1 minor. If you're doing like a Doors song or a Pink Floyd song, you'll do this a lot more. Well, if you're doing... Maybe if you're doing a Journey song... in flat 6 I don't know which band really uses this I like the mix of flat 6 one of my favorite scales then major back to major so that's how you can modally change it uh, to, to, to suit you we have taken just the plagal cadence and we'll keep it at that otherwise this video will become a long lecture so just note that we've done cadences, we've done a lot of cadence exercises on our channel. Cadences are basically tiny chord progressions. So just two chords separated by an interval. So in this case, four to one. So we'll keep the plagal cadence throughout. Uh, however, we've been looking at a bunch of scales and modes to explore it with. But let's cap off the lesson by moving this E. The, the only thing for me, which is rather boring in this... Uh, piece so far which we are making is the E is droning too much. A technique to make it a bit interesting would be go down a tone from the E. I'm going back to major. Go down a tone. What's down a tone? D. And do the same plagal movement but with respect to D. So what is D's fourth? That'll be G. So... That's A to E, and then when you go to G, and back to A. You get a decent chord progression. What I like about the passing chord is it allows the, the root to linger on or to drone for quite a long time, but not too long, you know. Mm, getting boring, very boring, so I change. And if you want to maintain the progression, go down to C, another tone. What is C's fourth? F. Go down another tone to B flat. A flat. And then G, G flat or F sharp. Back to E where you started. That's one way to move and the plagal cadence can be formed via the circle of fifths. C to F, F to B flat, you know, C going to F. So plagal from C would be F. We traditionally say four to one, F to C. But that plagal connection, that perfect fourth bond between the root and its perfect fourth is basically what I tell myself is plagal. Okay, or authentic or perfect cadence would be the interaction between two chords separated a perfect fifth apart. So if the root is E, its perfect fifth will be B. But we don't have time to do that in this lesson. If you are interested in a follow-up continuation for this uh, study, do leave us a note in the comments. Okay, so another way to move around and explore this as good as possible in a in a very interesting way in a non diatonic way would be the circle of fifths itself so e up to b and then f sharp and then to c sharp and then to a flat and then to M and back to C 12 o'clock and G mm -hmm. and then to D little more 
to go A and then we end on E and if you observe I did a few other passing chords so there's a lot which I tend to do it's not just the plagal passing but it's just a nice workout to practice if not anything you'll you'll be able to play all of your major chords a lot better after doing this around the circle or even in that whole tone down a tone kind of movement okay now circle of fifths clockwise you can even do circle of fifths counterclockwise so e going to a and then the d and then the g c and then f b flat and then the e flat and then the a flat and then the d flat and then the g flat or f sharp and then the b and back to where we started so circle of fifths you practice it this way clockwise or counter clockwise you can see my notes to get a briefing of it or just a visual of it i would also encourage you to draw it draw it the way it is in my notes and it's a practice it's always a good practice to write and learn in general okay so let's just have a quick recap as we've done a fair amount of things in this lesson we started off with a bass line not not a great bass line but what made the bass line a lot more interesting than what it was probably designed to be in a very synthy uh, machine like uh, bass line would be to add these accents following the snare kick and some randoms once that happened we looked at the posture of the left hand uh, keeping the wrist as flexible as possible or rubber band like as possible then we brought in a pattern tan 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 did that pattern over a major chord then we added some passing plagal flavor we explore the different modes other scales dorian and after that we moved this chord we we tried to get out of that e drone and we went tonally down then we went up and down the circle of fifths So if you found that a lot to practice remember you can always do something from this lesson which works for your skill level but don't forget the eventual goal the eventual goal would be to get all this going because if you do get all of what i told you you're going to get better at scales you're going to get better at harmonization you're going to get better at passing chords your hands will hope will become a lot more strong i uh, that's what i feel in general when you play rock funk salsa latin those sort of genres on the piano or even ragtime what will happen is your hands fingers everything gets stronger and then when you play other you know mellow light music ballads and all that you feel wow it's that's really easy so i would encourage you even if you don't like rock or a specific genre try try to play it because of what it's giving to you it's helping your hands to coordinate better it's training your ear as well it's also improving your strength your overall hand arm wrist everything the strength of the hand hopefully will get a lot stronger and don't practice it for too long try to take breaks when you play at least take a break the moment you feel any uh, kind of a fatigue or any kind of a muscle pain where it's you know you're feeling it right there i would definitely recommend taking a break or even just play for 10 minutes set a timer 
and then take a break for 5 or 10 minutes you know you don't have to play this consistently and it's a tough genre it's it's tough to it's a physical effort you might actually start sweating when you do this which fe- it will feel like a workout i think it is a workout so i don't know we'll have to let me know how many calories you burn doing this in the comments if you play for half an hour it will be interesting let me know Okay thanks a ton for watching the video get the notes on patreon and support the channel and don't forget to hit that subscribe button turn on the bell icon for regular notifications you also have the option of uh, supporting us further on our patreon page or on youtube itself by hitting the join button somewhere near you thanks for watching i will catch you in the next one cheers